Chris kind of had like a, a club going on sort of in his garage. Adam was doing the same thing and you know, we just had a, a whole group of us started investing a spare cash into all this home brew equipment to start tossing around this idea in my head of, you know, maybe opening up a small brewery. I kind of threw it out there in one semi-inebriated conversation. Next thing you know, Chris is on board, Adam shoots across the garage and he's on board. Three years from that moment to the time we actually opened our doors. At a, a young age, I was really into, uh, you know, heavier music. A lot of, you know, driving rhythm, you know, some would say it sounds a little angrier. The albums and everything had, you know, a lot of visual appeal. There was a lot going on, you know, you always wanted to grab the, grab the book and like thumb right through it and see, you know, all the pictures and what was going on inside and all the, the artwork in there. And I had a few friends that were starting a band. There happened to be a PA system there. So I just grabbed it and started doing Vocals as kind of a joke. None of us, you know, myself, Adam, or our third partner, Chris, have a background in this whatsoever. We had the business plan. We were looking at spots. Kind of came across this old mill in the Cheney district of Manchester. I spent a lot of my childhood riding my bike across town right through this neighborhood. We did a majority of this labor ourselves the layout and everything, sourcing the equipment. There was actually one outlet in here that is connected to the part of the building behind us. We did everything off that one outlet. And if we worked here at night, we had battery operated lights and that was probably the first six months. We were trying to think of a name and we couldn't think of anything, you know, really early on. We kind of gave ourselves like a deadline, you know, all right, in one week, we're gonna have a name. Chris's uh, wife happened to look over and see uh, the book Pan's Labyrinth in her house, and she just kind of said, you know, what about Labyrinth? We were canning earlier than we thought we were going to be canning. You know, one of the things that we thought was important is when someone looks at one of our cans, they know it's us. They know it's our brand. At that point, we were searching for someone to do labels. I was always a bit of an artist found out like really young that I was able to draw. I was obsessed with like comic books and stuff like that. Like X-Men was like my favorite, like Jim Lee style. Rocketeer came out when I was in like third grade or something and I would just draw the Rocketeer every day. And I was always into beer actually. Like I was early in like beer advocate way back. I, I loved traveling to like go to breweries and sample beer. That was a big thing in California because there was a ton of breweries out in San Diego that the type of beer there didn't exist back here. And I really wanted to get into the beer scene. I, I even wanted to be like a brewer at one point. Like I used to brew my own beer and the Labyrinth guys put out an art contest for somebody to design a label for Erebus. After the contest, I had just reached out to Adam. I was like, hey, like, after this, if you ever need anything, like, give me a call. And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then I think a year later, they're like, hey, we're gonna can some beers. You wanna, you wanna lay, uh, you know, you wanna help us brand them and design them. And, kind of been it ever since. That artwork sort of represents who we are. It could be, you know, artwork for any, like, band's album. From, like, writing lyrics to, like, writing a beer recipe to naming the song to naming the, the beer itself, it's, they're almost parallel. So, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it's the mythological stuff. Sometimes, you know, we're looking for a name that sort of describes the beer. I kind of approach it like each can label is it could be artwork for a metal band. Try to pull out as much information about their personalities and put that into the branding itself. There's definitely a couple where we're like, well, uh, we're, uh, we need to order these labels. We need to get Steve something uh, so he can work on it. And we're like, uh, all right, well, this is the best we got. <laughs> so, so that's what it is right now. 16 ounce can, it's like a two and a half inch wide area that like, if you're looking at it in the cooler, that's all you're gonna see. So. You know, how can I optimize that space? And fill it with a big, like, punch you in the face image, somebody walking by will have to see it. You know, it's interesting, like, you, you start thinking of all this, putting everything together, and you're still working your full-time job. But then it's really real the minute you walk out that door for the last time, and you're like, uh, wait a second, I'm not coming back here on Monday. 
we'd rather be doing this. We're passionate about this. We own this. If you know you really want to do something and you don't bother pursuing it, how are you going to feel about that in 10 years? Are you going to look back and just regret that you didn't take that shot? If you're really passionate about something, you should just go for it.